Hi guys, long time no see. I finally have some free time, so let's do a uh, let's do a tech deck. Uh, I've been building stupid amounts of decks. Um, my <laughs> my play group. Uh, I have two kids. One of the the guy who normally hosts um, just had a baby in December, so. Has been not as prevalent. Um, we've actually we've still been meeting. Uh, we had a, a four group. Um, one of the guys right now is doesn't know it, but he's kind of banned because he tends to show up sick. Um, <laughs> he wants to get his game in, and uh, sometimes he'll just neglect to mention that his wife and kid were vomiting or that he was vomiting or <laughs> that some sort of ailment has been running through his family and uh, with you know a, a small baby at the host house um, he's just not one time that he showed up, uh, um, you know, obviously sick, uh, and she had to go and basically died in the master bedroom, and she was not plus, um, so he kind of earned himself a, uh, ticket to exile for a little bit, um, but, <laughs> spaces to put them in and boxes to put them in. Um, you know, we, with the pre-cons, we all get these, you know, these boxes that are, I mean, they're okay. They'll hold a hundred cards sleeved. Um, just, just hold a hundred cards sleeved. Um, so I've been putting my decks in these extra ones because, you know, I've got a, a good amount of pre-cons over the years. Sturdy boxes like you know, this is just one of those cheap ones that you can get at like Target, um, which I mean they're not bad. They'll hold the cards; they're more sturdy than these pre-con boxes. Um, I do wish they had a. I mean, I guess I could write on this. It looks like it would take a sharpie. Um, I actually uh, on Amazon there's a brand called Quiver. It's, it's not too different from this, but it has name, uh, spaces, uh, with, you know, a texture so that the Sharpie works on them. So, I actually bought, I think now I've bought like two or three, five packs of deck boxes from them. Um, and the top drawer in my, uh, Magic Hutch. <laughs> China is. Um, the top drawer is just uh, just decks in those quiver boxes where I've put the name of the deck so that I can just pull the drawer open and look and see what I need. Um, but yeah, I'm running out of even these pre-con boxes. And I mean, the good, good and bad out of this is, you know, I got something to put it in, but the bad part is, you know, they're not the most... Uh, together, um, and, you know, I, I don't really want to write on them per se, I mean, this is not arm for battle, um, I, I probably took apart arm for battle very quickly, I don't know that I have a, do I have a pre-con that I, yeah, I, I have one pre-con that I didn't take apart, it was the Commander Masters, um, Enchantment. 
I sleep that immediately just because it was a very good day and honestly I have like three or four enchantment decks that have a lot of the same interplay so I didn't need to I didn't need to take it apart you know <clears throat> excuse me while I have my morning coffee it is, it is not even beginner uh, commander deck to make if you're interested in commander and you let's say you don't have a huge amount of cards um, or you're just not sure how to make something that's uh, you know able to to play in your play group I mean I know some play groups are utterly insane with the uh, level of decks um, we're not that crazy in my play group did have one guy that was an issue and we just stopped inviting him over um, because he was just doing ridiculous things and you know if you want to play like that and be playing you know um, very top level uh, competitive EDH um, you know that seems like something you can do at your game store without messing up your, your friends trying to get a game in, um, but this is a good, you know, this works well, it is not expensive, you can probably get a lot of these cards on the cheap, um, I don't know how much Feather is now, um, but, uh, you know, realistically this deck probably doesn't have too much in the way of expensive cards, uh, if any, um, you, I'd be surprised if many of these cards aren't under a dollar. step most of the time, um, you can, you, you know, you really only need one good opening hand, and you can rock this thing um, to completion, because um, you are not going to lose those cards. I mean, realistically, you could put enchantments and uh, auras on her, but you don't need to. This deck is all about playing instants and sorceries that are bang for your buck cards um, so that you can really just go nuts with her. So um, we'll take a look at some of the cards that we have in here. I'll just put her over here since she's the, you know, Coupe des Resistance. Um, here we have Righteousness. This is more of a defensive card, but it's so good for the one mana. Um, target blocking creature gets a 7 plus 7 until end of turn. Uh, so this just, you know, if you do have, uh, say you've given Feather Vigilance, or you happen to have gotten attacked, maybe 
you somebody has something dangerous. Um, righteousness is just a wonderful, um, you know, obviously it's like one of those perfect um, combat trick cards. You know, I've got a 1-1 one, one, and now he's an 8-8 eight, eight, when he blocks um, and you just killed your best creature. So uh, righteousness, and you'll notice in this deck, I did try to keep all of the instants and sorceries rather cheap. No, Feather is a three drop, so realistically, she's going to be attacking on turn four. Um, and at the latest, you know, <laughs> with no help, she'll be attacking on turn four. And uh, if you have enough one drop sorcery and instants, that means that Realistically, turn four, you should be able to cast four different instants and sorceries on her uh, during that attack or um, during other turns. So, righteousness is a favorite of mine. Uh, guiding voice. Um, this is just a one drop from Street Saving. good stuff for one mana. Will of the Awe Hunter. I can't remember if it's focus or not focus, depending on what it's doing that day. Um, <laughs> target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. If it's blocking, instead put two one one counters on it. So this can go either way. Either I can use this on my turn to make her a 5-6 and do a, a hefty amount of commander damage. Um, or if I do happen to use it during blocking, I will get two 1-1 one, one counters on her. Um, and again, this will come back to my hand at the end of turn. So just over and over and over again, if I choose to keep it in my hand, it is a 2-drop. It does have cycling. So, you know, if I did need something else, I could always cycle it out. happen to Feather. Um, and, you know, since she is only a three drop, these cards can be rather cheap. So, this is Helping Hand. Uh, return target creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So, if something does happen to happen to, um, to Feather, I can just play this rather cheap recovery card and get her out. Disenchanted, basically, but it's a cheaper disenchanted. Um, so it's just a one drop, and it's a destroy target enchantment. Um, this is good just in case they do happen to put something dirty and bad on Feather. Um, I do tend to run some of these nowadays just because, um, you know, apart from removal, I think enchanting your your friends' commanders is probably the worst thing you can do. some dark steel mutation stuck on your commander from the back end. Let's see, I'm going to try to see at what point I can let this go focus. He wants to focus nowhere is what he's saying to me this morning. Um, <laughs> I do have, I think, just one or two pieces of equipment in here. Um, but it has to be paying for your buck equipment. So this is the Haunted Cloak. Uh, it is a three drop for one to equip, and equipped creature gets Vigilance, Trample, and Haste. So this is great to be putting on your Feather. Um, she'll be trampling over things, uh, and she will have Vigilance so that you can use those blocking cards uh, a little bit more readily. Mana 
base. I mean, I, I have a forest garrison here. These garrison guards are, are great just because, you know, use the mana and then go ahead and return that mana to your hand for a two drop. I mean, the forest garrison can play half the cards in this deck by itself. This is a Basri Captain. You know, honestly, you could switch this out for almost any instant or sorcery. Um, but the reason I have him in here is his plus one is you put a 1 1 counter on up to one target creature and it gains indestructible until end of turn. Um, so, you know, I don't even care about his other uh, powers. I mean, literally, I don't care. I don't think I even. one is so good, uh, you know, making Feather 1-1 uh, stronger and indestructible until end of turn, um, that alone is going to be worth its inclusion, so, let's see there, they got the other soldier powers in, and then I guess if you're making a uh, DDP soldier deck, that would be great, but, actually I have a DDP white soldier deck, maybe I should get another Basri. something quick and then also a counter so if you happen to have cards for my Coria I would go through and look um, there are there's like a green card that gives uh, untaps and gives plus one plus zero on reach um, I forget what the white card does it probably gives them vigilance but uh, for red, it's plus one, plus zero, and a first strike counter. So, you know, even if this wasn't going to come back to your hand, um, you get a counter on Feather out of it, and a first strike counter is a great unit to have on your commander if you're trying to do um, that first strike damage, or, you know, really for protection for Feather to an extent. <clears throat> This deck a couple weeks ago, um, my opening hand was delicious. I didn't concede anything else, so I didn't really get too far into the deck, uh, or I didn't need to. I actually killed him in about, I don't know, five turns, um, <clears throat> which for us is pretty quick. Um, but she's here just in case. Uh, Number one, she's another target for these instants and sorceries because she's flying vigilance and haste in a 4 4. Um, whenever a player attacks with three or more creatures, you draw cards so you can draw cards off of your opponents. Um, and if they attack with five or more creatures, Aurelia does three damage to each of your opponents and you gain three life. So, a very good card to have out at the same time as Feather if you need to um, for a secondary attacker and also for this card draw and life gain if need be but honestly you don't need to include her at all she's not uh, she's not needed you know as I said the, really the goal of this deck is to have that opening hand where <coughs> You have uh, basically everything you need right there. Uh, adamant will. Target creature gets plus two, plus two. <coughs> and gains indestructible until end of turn. Sorry, I'm hacking this morning. Uh, this is one of the protection cards, so a lot of this deck is either pumping or protection or this this is a really card great card for both um you know you can 
save this for your bullets turns if you wanted to. <clears throat> or uh, just, you know, use it in uh, your own combat step so that you get a plus two plus two boost and you don't have to worry about Feather being blocked by anything large. <clears throat> now since you're probably just going to be running a few creatures, I mean this, this deck maybe has four creatures out there, uh, you do want maybe something to protect yourself. Uh, this is Baird. Uh, he is a four drop and he says that creatures can't attack you or planeswalker you control unless the controller pays one for each of those creatures. So, um, you know, just a easy deterrent, um, just making it, you know, cost ineffective to be attacking you, um, and that will normally turn people away. Um, <clears throat> not unlike, uh, propaganda in blue. So, uh, you know, very good thing to just drop out there blocker he's got vigilance um and he'll hopefully slow down the onslaught if somebody notices that you're um, becoming an issue Let's see we have quick draw this is from the new um, outlaws of thunder junction set uh, target creature you control gets a plus one plus one and gains first strike until end of turn and even better for one, the creature's target opponent controls lose first strike and double strike until end of turn. So uh, if you do happen to be going into combat um, with somebody that has first or double strike, you don't have to worry about it uh, when you play this card. Um, plus gives the plus one plus one boost. So you know, Feather is a four or five with first strike and suddenly she doesn't care about first strike on the opposing side. landscape. I'm skipping most lands. This is a uh, African parlor just so we have two different types of mana. When it comes out you surveil one. Nothing exciting. I mean that's rare. I don't even know why. <coughs> uh, there, this is like a, a cheap meme board wipe. Um, slaughter the strong. Each player chooses any number of creatures he or she controls with total power then sacrifices all their creatures he or she controls. Feathers base powers three, so if you do need to clear out the board, you just play this, uh, choose Feather as your survivor, and uh, chances are you won't be sacrificing anything else. <coughs> oh, come on, Kim. <laughs> um, play this door. That's it. Um, you know, if you're going to be hitting with your commander, you might as well give her double strike every turn. Uh, we have the original Johnny. Um, he's in here because his plus one is to put a 1-1 one -one counter on target creature. Uh, you could also, I guess, if you want to do the negative three, um, it would give flying and double strike until end of turn. Obviously, she does need flying, but the double strike could be a game ender if you've done enough commander damage. Let's see, we have a wind scarred crag for one life and using two damage to mana. This is another one from Outlaws. This is a take up the shield. Put a 1 1 counter on target creature, it gains life link and indestructible until end of turn. So that, I mean, that's a really cool one for a two-drop instant. Every turn you could be putting 1-1 one, one counter, protecting her for the entire combat and gaining life. So that's, I mean, for two, that's ridiculous. <laughs> a 1-1 one, one counter. Uh, spectators eating venom. 
because I did not get any fancy news except my regular mountains and plains. Um, you know, normally I would not include Lord of the Rings cards. My Lord of the Rings decks are, are very much um, universe specific. <laughs> Feather as a blocker, you can use those instants that care about blocking. Um, Equip creature has first strike as long as it's blocking or blocked by a goblin or orc. Uh, you know, some flavor abilities, but you're really looking at that second ability uh, for the untap at the beginning of each combat. this as a way to put Feather back in your hand if something dangerous like a Borg Wipes is coming. Or just put 1-1 one -one counters and untap her over and over again. Really good card at the end of your turn. You know, untap her after combat, put a 1-1 one -one counter on her and put it back in your hand. Um, this one is really just uh, protection for me, the player. Uh, this is a Metropolis Reef. And you have expert work, so uh, hopefully she'll be protecting you from pesky things like direct damage spells, um, and also you know spells that make you sacrifice creatures. Uh, whenever she's dealt damage, you gain that much life. Um, probably not going to be blocking with her. She's just going to stand on the battlefield and give me um, protection for three. <laughs> strike until end of turn. Scry one. So this is good for, you know, that first strike again. And it's also letting you look through the deck for maybe better and more useful cards. <laughs> this is a fun one just because it, you know, you could do stupid stuff with it. Because um, you're playing it over and over. A Johnny's influence. Zero gets her up to five commander damage. The first strike is protection in case there's a blocker. And uh, you're just filling up your mana hoard with the treasures. <coughs> uh, this was in my opening and we played, and it is just a beautiful card for this deck. Uh, this is Infuriate. Um, this just happens to be the Strixhaven spell. three plus two until end of turn so effectively you're making feather a six six with this one red mana um you know 21 commander damage and you're done so this quickly makes her uh really out of hand weapon surge target creature you control gets plus one plus zero and gains first strike Cards that just give her a small bump on her um, 
stats plus first strike. Um, and now that to be very useful. Uh, battlefield promotion. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. That creature gains first strike until end of turn and you gain two life. So that's a beautiful card that for every turn. 1-1 one, one counter set steady. And the first strike for that combat and you're getting life out of it also all for two. <coughs> And uh, <clears throat> I guess you could play a turn combat, but that's one of my keep in your hand type of cards. Uh, Kaya's Onslaught. Target creature gets plus one, plus one, and gains double strike until end of turn. That's beautiful. Um, I guess if you wanted to foretell it, you could. But if you have the mana, you know, making Feather a 4 5 and double strike is going to be eight commander damage. Um, might as well do that if you have the, the mana for it. Another protection spell, Flicker of Fate. Exile target creature enchantment and then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. So if you need to flicker them away from a spell, spirit angel after that. <coughs> Dreadmaw's Ire. This is really good. Um, one drop until end of turn. Target attacking creature gets plus two, plus two, gains trample. And whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, destroy target artifact that player controls. So, you know, making your feather A5-6, she's got trample. soul in or some other useful artifact they have. <coughs> I always like to build even decks, so if there is a problem creature on the board, I'd like to have some answers, and white is a very good way to get answers. Uh, minimus Containment. Uh, this is a aura enchantment. You can enchant non-land permanent, so honestly almost anything. Uh, and enchanted permanent becomes a treasure. So it loses everything else, and it just becomes a treasure that the uh, opposing player can sack for a mana. Sudden <coughs> uh, Breakthrough. Um, another really good one. Uh, target creature gets plus two, plus zero, and gains first strike until end of turn. And a treasure token. I'm suddenly worried that that's the exact same thing that we saw not too long ago, and you know, sometimes you do. Oh no, see, look at that. Ancestor's Aid and uh, Sudden Breakthrough are the same card uh, as far as what they do, <laughs> but they have different names. Hey, if you find a good card that they have made multiple times with different He's just here in case I need to get rid of creatures. Uh, this is a great old card. He's a free drop for a 1-1. One, one. But you can tap him to destroy target creature with power for or greater. So uh, who cares that he's a 1-1? One, one? This guy is freaking killing stuff on the battlefield. Um, I love the artwork. He's got these blinked out armor and this giant sword. Uh, but he's just a 1-1. One, one. But he's, he's killing stuff. So if need be, if I do have creatures out, I can cast it. Uh, target creature gains indestructible until end of turn. So this is a great um, thing to just keep in your hand if you have two mana, if you need to. Or if you do have creatures out, you can go into the next turn 
big creature you could have as a secondary attacker. Um, but she'll also be um, giving Fevner indestructible. Um, just in case we need it, we have a swords to plowshares. Um, this is the beautiful um, strength saving art. I, I did love those those treatments. Um, I actually have a play mat of this um, artwork. <coughs> Prevent all damage that would be dealt to the target creature this turn. Again, another one of you. If you start the game with, you know, one or two cards that boost her damage and like one or two protection spells, you're you're done. You don't even need to draw more cards because these are all coming back to your hand. And then you can just drop out what maybe is less cost effective or uh, a smaller. Stand. Uh, this has a strive cost, so you can cast it multiple times for multiple targets. But we don't need to. Since uh, any number of target creatures each get plus two, plus zero, gain first strike and vigilance until end of turn. Um, that's all we're looking to do with this one. <coughs> indestructible as hexproof and you're going to scry when somebody tries to get at you amazing card uh, i think what i played or i had that and infuriate in my opening hand and i knew that i was basically all done um, <laughs> uh, a johnny's presence uh, one drop it does have a strive cost but we're not using it uh, any number of target creatures each get plus one plus one and gain indestructible strike and take first strike away from everybody else on the field. I love the Theros block if anybody's interested. Um, just that whole, uh, you know, that whole mythological Greek feel. It's just, I love that crap. <clears throat> uh, Martial Glory. Um, target creature gets plus three, plus zero until end of turn. And target creature gets plus zero, plus three until end of turn. I'm just going to target Feather with both of these. 
was in like a uh, six, seven. This is Lunar Friend. 
see this is a great game ender. Um, target creature you control gets plus X plus zero and gains first strike and trample until end of turn. So this is basically a howl from beyond in red. Um, and it's actually better because howl from beyond does not give me first strike or trample. So it's just one red and X. You could effectively win the game with this one. Um, just pump each other up with all your mana and uh, hit people and then use it again next turn. Another cheap card that uh, lets you put 1-1 counters on a card for battle. Uh, one drop for put a 1-1 counter on each of up to two target creatures. If you happen to just have feather, that's fine. It's 1-1 counter every turn. If you have more than feathers, then you can bump somebody else too. Kettis here. Uh, he was in, I don't think he was in my old Mian, but I got him out rather quick. Um, and Kettis is great for t if you're doing commander damage. Uh, whenever a commander you control deals combat damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to each other opponent. Um, now that is not commander damage, only the person you're attacking is taking commander damage. But uh, in the case of Feather, consistent damage, which is what we're trying to do, uh, you know, if you hit somebody for five or six commander, and you're doing five or six to everybody else on the field, that's nothing to sneeze at. Swifties in here actually. Uh, I think this was, I built this when I was out of Swifties. No reason to be ordered some more, but um, the Lava Spur Boots does its thing, and you know, realistically, I don't think Swifties is needed simply because you have so many cheap one drops that are going to protect Heather or Feather <laughs> from anything uh, your opponents might throw at her, and they're going to come back to your hand, so there for you. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, like I said, if you are getting into Commander and you want something cheap to build, um, or if you have, you know, a good amount of cards but nothing expensive, you know, pick up Feather. Um, you know, she'll probably be the most expensive card in this deck. Uh, and then just go through what you have. Put a whole bunch of mountains and planes. Get a whole bunch of that you know you'll be using over and over again uh, 
can go wild with it. Um, you know, it's really easy to build. It's really fun to pilot. It's really easy to pilot. You don't have to think too much. You know, just make sure we have mana open for your defensive spells if you 